So this week I added an air conditioner to the solar shed and it doesn't look that well done but it's super strong. All I did was cut out a hole and slap it in there. I put two 2x4s two on the bottom and I screwed these into the studs on both sides. So it's really secure but it's not that pretty. And previously I was going to connect it to my MPP solar inverters but these have a standby consumption of 96 watts. That is unacceptable for a load that you want to power 24 hours a day. And here in Las Vegas, it's going to get crazy hot even at night. So I want to make sure that this system actually works. So what I did instead is I added this Giandale Pure Sine Wave Inverter. And this uses only 6 watts of consumption for standby. So I can run this comfortably all day long without any issue. And when this is in standby mode, it only uses one watt. A lot of my viewers wanted me to use a mini split, but they cost $600 to $900. And for cooling a 150 square foot shed, that is pretty pointless. And this is really efficient as it is. I couldn't stand those portable ones. Those are not efficient at all. Um, there's also going to be mini split window air conditioners. But again, those are like $400. And for what I'm doing, I really don't need that. If I really need more power and to deal with the inefficiency loss with this I'll just add another solar panel to my array so it's not a big deal for me and at full load this only uses 440 watts of consumption so that means that with a 14 kilowatt hour battery pack over here I can run it for a very very long time and this solar shed can produce 4.8 kilowatt hours a day of power so powering this little tiny air conditioner is fine if I want to power this 24 hours a day at full blast such as the summer here in Las Vegas um, I can add some more solar panels and do that what I need to do next is actually insulate the shed a lot and add a mini attic because once it's insulated the amount of power to run this will be very minimal and the air conditioner is actually connected to a blue eddy and this has 2.4 kilowatt hours on top of our 14 kilowatt hours so we have 16.4 available and the reason I did this is because this charges so slowly that I will only get 2.1 kilowatt hours a day so that means I can keep this inverter on 24 hours a day charging this blue eddy and and I know that I will not have an over discharge situation because this Gandale, unlike the MPP inverters, does not have a low voltage cutoff. And I'd have to use some form of timer circuit to turn on and off the switch. So the workaround, what I'm going to do in the summer is I'm going to connect the air conditioner directly to the Gandale, but I'm going to use a Wi-Fi switch so that I will turn the air conditioner on for like 10 or 14 hours a day and I'll calculate the consumption and I'll compare that to my 4.8 kilowatt hours a day that I'll have available and I want to be able to run the air conditioner for the perfect amount of time for the amount of power that the solar shed will produce and I will still have two or three days of backup power anyways so this is a pretty good system and I'll be able to run this as much as I want really soon and if I can't if I need more power I'll just add some more solar panels I also have a kilowatt watt meter between the air conditioner and the Blue Eddy, and I'm going to figure out on hot days how much power is required to keep this shed cool. And I think the biggest factor to consider is how insulated the shed is. And a lot of people want to see if you can run an air conditioner off of a Blue Eddy, and you absolutely can. It just depends on the size of the air conditioner. So for a 6000 BTU, only using 440 watts is totally fine. So let's turn it on and I'll show you. Now the air conditioner's on and I'm gonna check the consumption. And it's using only 360 watts. But it's a very, very efficient little air conditioner. And it only uses one watt for standby. So I think this is probably the best fit for this little tiny shed. And we have a really big thermometer so I can check on the temperature with this. But some of these webcams have a temperature sensor in them and I can get notified on my phone when it reaches a certain threshold. Because all I want is this to be a storage space for my large battery bank of lithium iron phosphate. Also, this has a timer circuit mode, so instead of using a Wi-Fi switch, I could just set the timer, but I'm not sure how that works exactly. I need to read the manual still. Also, the Giandale inverters, these ones down here with the low standby consumption, they're my favorite cheap inverter on the market. There's a lot of trash out there, and I have destroyed inverters and had black smoke come out for absolutely no reason at all. So you don't want to buy cheap inverters, but Giandales are the only ones that I actually like. 
If I was not using the Gandil and I wanted low standby consumption, I would spend about $1,500 on the Victron Multi Plus 2 and I would get a 24 volt version and that would be perfect for this application. But if not, this little $300 inverter actually works really well and it's only 6 watts of standby consumption. When these are connected in parallel for split phase operation, you need both of them in standby even if you're using only one leg of the output. So you cannot just have one of these on when it's in split phase mode. Both of them have to be on. That's why the standby consumption is so high. Because individually these only use like 45 watts of standby. And most large inverters of this size at this price that's not UL listed are going to use like 35 to 45 watts. So the Gian deal stands apart from the other ones because it has such a low standby consumption. I should also add that these have a power saving mode and if it senses anything under 5 watts these will shut down. But the air conditioner only uses 1 watt. So when this is in standby mode and the fans turn off, these will turn off as well and there will be no way for it to turn back on again. So that's the big problem with using these for that air conditioner in particular. Now the next step is figuring out if I can power this air conditioner off of 4.8 kilowatt hours. If I need more power after my energy audits on the first initial hot days, then I will change my array accordingly. And then I will tell you guys how much power is required. But as long as this is insulated more, I don't think it will be that much power. This thing can cool down this shed in a few minutes. This is a very small shed. But when we have like 110 to 120 degree days, it might be a little bit more difficult. So we're going to find out soon enough. Anyways, just a quick update on my little air conditioner. I like it. Look how fancy it is. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.